You're listening to the Best Morning Routine Ever podcast, the show that proves no one stumbles upon success ever. With your host, Lou Need. Every Mondays and Thursdays, we deliver cold heart evidence behind the power of a robust morning routine. Get ready to be transformed by the renewal of your mind. If you're the kind of person who likes to have total control over every aspect of your life, like I do, boy, do I have a product for you. It's customized to you. It displays your photos. It keeps track of your calendars, your preferred news, your local weather, even your commute traffic to work. All while you are getting ready and looking in the mirror in the morning. It makes it so easy to get organized so you won't miss a thing. It is designed for early adopters and innovators only. Those who see what everyone else has seen, but think what no one else has thought. Is this you? Check this out. Introducing Smart Eye Mirror. It's not just a smart mirror, it's a smart lifestyle. Go check it out at bestmorningroutineever.com and go into the dress up tab. And there you'll see all things Smart Eye Mirror to give you more information. And I will be excited and elated to customize it to you and your liking and your lifestyle. Hello, morning enthusiasts. Welcome to the Best Morning Routine Ever podcast. I am your host, Looney Lewis. And today I have the honor of introducing a very special guest to the show, Kara Harvey. She works as a mom empowerment coach, and her mission is to provide women with the tools, the resources, and community to reach their goals. She helped them empower themselves and lead happier and more fulfilled life. She has does this by using her blog, her podcast, her virtual community group, and e-courses that which help women to stay and live a balanced life. And that encompasses finances, scheduling, health, um, you name it. So it's an honor to have her on board. I'm looking forward to our conversation. Kara, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks, Lenny, for having me. I can't wait to chat. Yes, yes, yes. So I know you have a wealth of um, background and this is you've been doing this for quite some time. But before we dive into the how you do it, let's talk about your journey so far. Yeah, it's been wild. Um, I definitely call myself an accidental entrepreneur. Like I did not mean to be sitting here (laughs) at all. I was a school teacher for eight years and I loved it. And I remember the moment I burnt out. And I realized I couldn't do it anymore. And it was that eighth year I was on an admin track and I was the principal of our summer school program. And the last day of summer school overlapped with the first day of regular school. And I sat in my car and I cried. I "I can't be in two places at once. And I really lost myself. And part of that was my anxiety was getting awful. I had forgotten to take any time for myself. I wasn't sleeping and Mm -hmm. I knew something had to change. And so I went home and I told my husband, I'm like, I don't know what to do, but I've got to change something. And he's a numbers guy. So he was like, cool, you got to make money. Like what's, what are you going to do here? And I was dabbling in network marketing, you know, making a little bit of money. And I thought, well, maybe I could make the bare minimum to just leave. Mm-hmm. And I hate the word hustle, but it's it's what I did that last year of teaching. And I was able to leave teaching to work in network marketing. And I said to my husband, I was like, all right, we've got this. We can, we can do this. He's like, yeah, we'll figure it out. And it looked really great for the next two years. Like on the outside, it was super successful. I'd run this huge six figure network marketing business. Like everybody was like, oh, you're really doing it. And I was drowning on the inside oh. because I was taking all those things that I did when I was teaching the inbox zero, staying up all night, the hustle mentality. Mm-hmm. And I had brought it into this business and I was burning out again. And so about two years of doing that full time, I remember I was almost popped like nine months pregnant with my son. And um, I said to my husband, I want to do something different. And so right after he was born, uh, 3M over a boppy pill and nursing him, I, I built a website and I thought, let's figure this out. And uh, over the course of the past four years, a purpose-driven mom was born. And I found my love for teaching moms productivity, not in a way that's like shame-based or meant to make us feel bad about not like what we don't do, but to empower women to say, you know what, this is my season. This is what I'm working on. And this is what makes sense for my priorities right now. Right. What's beautiful about your story is you lived it. You out of your daily life, that daily encounter with the kids, you saw you saw the problem, you saw the challenge and you were like, maybe other mothers are going through this. 
Yes, we are not alone <laughs> at all in this. Yeah, so it, it's fascinating, and you grew um, a business out of it, and and now you are able to help you know thousands and thousands of moms. I'm um, doing this, so tell us about the. The hustle. I know you don't like that word, mm-hmm. right? Because yep. being a mom and being an entrepreneur, you have to wear several different hats. And in it within itself, it is a hustle. You got to juggle so many things. So tell us about what that reality is um, being a mom yourself. Yeah. And you know what? I think hustle does get a bad rep, but I think when it's an intentional hustle, it's a little bit different. I think we need to look at our lives. And this is the one thing I've learned in motherhood and running my business and doing all the things is it's all about seasonality and it's about intention. So I think that it's really key to look at next month, the month after, the month after that, and ask yourself, based on what I have going on, what season am I in? So for example, we run like a big event in March. It's a virtual summit. We have like thousands of women who attend. It's like summit season, January, (laughs) February, March, right? And I know that. I know this is a season of go for me. So I tell my family, I enroll them in this vision of, listen, the next couple of months are going to be super duper busy. But in April, when we're done, my husband actually literally just booked us a spot on a cruise for April. He was like, all right, we're going to (laughs) go away and we're going to rest. And we have that season of rest. And I think for me, learning how to quote, have it all or manage it or whatever as as a mom has really come from this place of asking myself, what is my priority for this season? It's not like, oh, I'm putting my goals off forever. It's just saying what makes sense right now and what doesn't make sense. And then really anchoring into that without guilt. You know, like right now it's back to school. I got three kids in three different schools. I'm like, what are we doing? We're just trying to figure our schedules out. So I didn't put a lot of goals on my plate this month Mm -hmm. and that's okay. And I think sometimes we feel like we have to have like a hundred things we're working on at once or we're failing. And I said, this is a season right now of getting used to our schedules. I'm not going to add a bunch of stuff to that because I know that Mm -hmm. next month, I hope that we're a little more settled. So I'm going to add in a goal or two. And I think that is really the key to this quote, intentional hustle is knowing that it's, it's on purpose for a reason for this season and also building in um, a couple of seasons I like to build in is like the season of go um, or hustle, a season of planning and a season of rest and a season of fun too. Yeah. I think those four are like really important to plan it. And a season can be a week. It could be a month. It could be an actual quarter if you want it to be. But I think when you look at your plan that way and you identify them in advance, the day-to-day tasks feel less daunting because you're like, all right, I know this is my season of go and I've got a season of rest coming next week and that's okay. And I think it, it helps you ditch the guilt of having to do it all at the same time. It allows you to live a more rich life as well because you're present, you're in the moment because you know what you're allocating each time frame for. And so that quite creative. Now I hear you say um, season quite often, and I'm a woman from God, of God and as you are, but for those who are not listening, what do you, what is a season? What happens in that period? Because I find my, I myself find it very powerful with each season. What, when you come out of them, um, depending on what the objective is going in, it, that includes fasting as well, but I want you to kind of elaborate and unpack what season is. Yeah. And I think that, you know, a lot of times people get really stuck into like the calendar and stuff. And they're like, well, if my goals don't fit up with my calendar, then I'm behind. And I'm like, it's just a calendar, right? When I look at seasons, like, sure. Could I be like, what are we doing in the summer and the winter? Sure. I really mean like, what is this season of life that you're in? What is happening for you? And sometimes we have these times in our life of struggle. Sometimes we have these times in our life that are just full of joy. And sometimes we have these times where we're just really trying to survive. And I think by identifying where you're at, you can make a plan that is more connected. So my sister had a baby, gosh, I think he's eight months now. But when she was in her newborn season of life, where she was really just trying to figure motherhood out for the first time, her goals, her challenges, her struggles, her successes, they looked very different Mm -hmm. than me with all my kids at school doing my thing, right? Like her wins are, you know, did I shower today? (laughs) Like, did I make it through this part Um, where mine looked different? And I think what's really empowering for women is to ask yourself, and for me also, it's like, what, what season has God called me to be in? Like, is this a time where I do need to slow down a little bit? Is this a time where I'm going to ramp it up? And really being a detective around that and not just going through the motions. I think when you're intentional about asking these questions and deducing, like, what should I be doing right now? What makes sense for me and my life? You're not living life on autopilot. Mm -hmm. You're living it with intentionality. And that's when I think alignment comes in and things feel really good. Like if I want to have a a season where I know I need to rest because it's restorative, because I need some quiet space, because I've just been going, I don't want to feel guilty about it. But 
I know that this is the time that I'm in and I, and I'm going to be able to ramp it up in a week or so when it's the right time. Right. So season being in a season is not just going, as you say, through the calendar. It's not just going on checking things off a to do list, but it's actually a, a time frame, a period of your life where it is personal. It is mm-hmm. yours and yours alone, depending on what's happening in your life. And so you have to be intentional in listening and to know what that space is, what that time yeah. is. And that customization is important because I think we see other women who are in quote the same season, like a newborn season or your kid, my kids in kindergarten like that. And we think our lives should look like theirs because we're in the same age bracket or our kids are in a similar age bracket, or we're going through the same type of thing at work, but it actually is super customized. Like we can be going through the same situation, but based on all the other factors in my life at the time, you might be able to have more joy in a season, you know, than I do. And I think it's important knowing it's really customizable based on what you need right now. Very well put. So let's talk about that customization piece of it, because especially with, with habits and routine there, you, you have to make it your own. So tell us about how you help your clients envelope that. Yeah. I think that when it comes to routines and creating things that you want to stick it's so key to start with the vision of it. Like, mm-hmm. what do you really want this to look like and why? And I, you know, people don't always love journaling, but I think it's key to write it out, draw it out, talk it out on your phone app or whatever you want to do. Ask yourself, like, what would it look like if I was to get this routine, this morning routine done? Like, what would it feel like for me? What would I really want to accomplish? And really enroll yourself in that vision because again, based on the time of your life that you're in, your morning routine or evening routine or whatever routine might look different. So I think that in order to customize, you've got to start with your vision for what makes sense for you. Like I like to work out in the mornings, right? Some people might like to work out at night. We don't have to have the same exact routine to develop habits. And so once you've got your vision, then I encourage people to go ahead and create um, an action plan. I call it routine stacking so that you're not overwhelming yourself. You're not burning yourself out, but instead you're doing this like slow and steady scaffold to create things that will stick because here's what we do. And this is such a common example, but think about like, if you've ever been on a diet and you're like, I'm going to go to the gym for like three hours a day and I'm never going to look at chocolate and whatever. And then by Tuesday, you're like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. (laughs) I'm going to try again on Monday, right? And we call it the Monday mentality. It's what we do with everything. We're like, go big or go home because that's what we're told to do. But that doesn't always create lifelong habits. And so one of the things I recommend when you're customizing is using this routine stacking to create what works for you and moving at your own pace. And so what this would look like is starting with your vision, like, hey, what are four things you want to accomplish in your morning routine, right? Like I want to get up, I want to do my prayer, I want to go for a walk, unload my dishwasher and start a load of laundry, like whatever you want that to look like and know where you want to go. And then instead of saying, okay, it's Monday, it's a new month, it's the first January, whatever, I'm going to do all four, pause and pick one and say, what is the one thing that I'm going to work on this week? Maybe it's getting up and having like five minutes of just like a little prayer time. This is, I try to do this before I leave my bed. I'm like, before I even get up, like I'm not even going to move because the second I get out of bed, something's going to pull me yep. and I'm going to do a quick prayer, right? So if that's how I start my day, that first week, That's all I want to work on. I'm just going to work on that one thing and I'm going to track it. I'm going to say, did I get my five minutes in? Did I get my five minutes in? And then at the end of the week, you can ask yourself, did I hit my goal? And if you're like, yeah, I hit five out of five days. Well, then you can stack a second routine on top of that, right? Now you're like, okay, I'm going to do my five minutes of prayer and then I'm going to go for a 10 minute walk. So you're slowly kind of anchoring that time up. And then next week, you can add the third thing and the fourth thing. And uh, you know, people will say like, should I add some one thing each week? you can customize. So maybe for example, you're like, I need more time on this. Like I could use two weeks to make this a habit. Go ahead. Take two weeks to make, take a whole month to make something a habit and add when you feel ready. Because I think when we feel like, okay, we've got to add this and then add this and then add this until we have this 12 step morning routine, it gets super like uh, cloudy in our heads, what we're supposed to do. And then we forget. And then we get off track and then we're like, oh, I've got to start over and nothing actually sticks. Right. And it's uh, very similar to habit stacking, right? Because um, the notion of habit stacking is not to do too much too fast. It's gradual. Your brain needs to actually slowly and gradually um, get acclimated with anything new that you introduce to it. Yeah. And so with habit stacking, um, I'm glad you brought it up, Kara. With habit stacking, it's um, one example could be 
you're going to go for that walk, you can um, listen to uh, we could do a breathing or meditation along that walk. So you're stacking, uh, you're creating a new habit, you're adding a new habit to something you're already doing. So that makes it easier to actually add to that list. So you're not creating a whole new time frame to, to add it on or reading a book. If you want to start reading in the morning, um, do audio while you're going for that morning walk. Yeah. And having those things that are already established and adding in, I like to call them habit triggers too, mm-hmm. like adding them into things that are already happening is one of the easiest ways to start a habit yeah. because we all brush our teeth. We yeah. all get up and we do all these things. But if you start to be a, a little bit more intentional and ask yourself, what's something I could do when I'm doing this? Like I like to listen to a podcast while I'm like brushing my teeth in the morning and getting ready. And I'll, all of a sudden I'll look around and be like, it's really quiet. Oh, I forgot to hit play. <laughs> You know, like I forgot. And eventually you create that habit. Um, and I think people want to rush it though. I feel like people want everything to happen real quick and overnight. And I, I run, remind people like there's going to be days where you forget it. There's going to be days where your routine gets off, but adding in things to help you like alarms or on your phone to remind you, you should be doing these things, tracking them. I yeah. think is so important. That's something a lot of people, they struggle with tracking. And I remind them like tracking is also a goal within itself. I think people think they're just supposed to be good at tracking their goals. Tracking is actually a goal. Like in my membership, we have like one focus on, are you just tracking your goals? Because it's not something that is habitual all the time for people. Mm -hmm. And I think that we feel like we're just supposed to be able to do it. And it's like, Hey, if you're just making a goal of paying attention to what you're doing and getting your data, I think at the end of the week, you're going to see that you've made progress. So maybe that first week, like I wanted to do my prayer and I only did it one out of the five days instead of doing the thing we do, you know, where we beat ourselves up and say that we're awful and we could never do it. Why don't we just say, you know what? I'm proud of you for showing up for that one day. And next week, instead of stacking a second habit on top of this, why don't we say, I'm going to do two days this week, two out of five, Mm -hmm. and then three out of five. And I think you find that you surprise yourself because you will show up. But when we try to jump in and people be like, shouldn't I do things seven days, like every day in a row? And I actually don't recommend that because I think you set yourself up for failure. Like I know there's all these studies, 21 days to make a habit, but as a mom of three, there is rarely something I've done every single day <laughs> like right. because things pop up. I get so distracted. So why not instead create a buffer and allow life to happen and say, I'm going to do it five days. And if I do it seven, that's like a bonus, like way to go high five. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's really important too. Like, do I strive for seven? Yeah. But if I hit five, I'm super happy with that because I know that there'll be a day my kid doesn't sleep through the night, somebody's sick and I get thrown off. And I think we often don't leave ourselves that buffer time to let life happen. Right. And that's when we get all thrown off and we don't know how to jump back on. And it, yeah, it's that that wiggle room is quite mm. necessary, but it also allows you to have grace um, towards yourself when, when it doesn't pan out to be graceful and to know that, hey, it's okay. Um, there is another day to try, but also I think we're highly overcritical and we can't do that. We have really start talking to ourselves like, we're talking to a lover almost every time because we're so like so harsh on ourselves. We're so you know? mean. Yeah, we're so <laughs> we're mean. so mean to ourselves. Uh, we have a saying in my community, and it's stop talking about my friend like that. <laughs> and so when we hear somebody talking negatively about themselves, even in just like a tiny type of a limit, like we try not to use the word just or should in my community because we know like just is just is it makes you feel like you're not doing good enough, right? Yeah. Like I just did this part of my morning routine. No, you did that. You did that. Own that and let's move on. So when we hear people, we'll say, stop talking about my friend like that. Because you wouldn't. You wouldn't talk to your friend the way that you talk to yourself. And that inner critic is so mean. And we sometimes need these pattern interrupts to just actually stop us to realize we're doing it. Because especially for women, like when we've been speaking negatively to ourselves in our brains or out loud, or we've been hearing it since we were little, it is so hard to stop that in its tracks because it's just who we are, right? Mm -hmm. Like we've just always done it. And so I think it's important to start to realize when you're saying these negative things or these limiting beliefs or starting to get down on yourself for not being perfect and be your own cheerleader and applaud yourself for getting up or doing whatever you did and reminding yourself like, nope, we're not going to discredit what we did this week. Maybe I didn't hit my goal, but I showed up and right. that's progress. Right. And that that's well said because that's setting yourself up for success because you really want to take action the next time because that's the fastest way to actually get rid of that. That negative thought is to build confidence, is to actually make moves, to take action and continue to take action. Yeah. And that's going to um, help quiet it down. And sooner or later you wake up and realize hey, it's not there anymore. And that's, mm-hmm. that's the victory. And I think a lot of the 
things you talked about, Kara, is those tactics that we know we're talking about the stacking, the routine and the habit is really we focus so much on the end goal. A lot of the times that becomes overwhelming. You know, we really got out of optimize for the starting line and not just the finish line. And I think with weight loss, for example, you know, I want to lose 30 pounds. Well, 30 pounds seems drastic. It seems like I'm going to have to do a lot of work, a lot of running, a lot of push-ups to get to that versus, you know what, I'm going to get up tomorrow and I'm going to go outside for five minutes and take a five minute walk. That seems a lot easier than I want to lose 30 pounds in 30 days. It's daunting, but if we, I think there's a, there's a shift that has to take place and let me know if you agree or not that you have to really optimize for the starting line these days. Yeah. I love the way you said that. Yeah. Because I think we become uh, goal chasers. I don't know if you've read Atomic Habits by James Clear, but he talks about this concept of becoming a goal chaser. We're just going, we finish a goal and we move to the next and we finish a goal. And now listen, I am driven. I love achieving goals. Like that's in my DNA, but I realized I needed to pause and stop and really celebrate all the wins along the way, especially when you have like a long journey, right? Like think yeah. about finances. Like I want all my student loans to pay off. Like that's a long journey. Yeah. Like I am not going to get a reward on that for a while. And I think we need to do a couple of things. One is we need to celebrate the victories along the way, but two is we need to break it down into smaller chunks. Um, one of the reasons I noticed a lot of my clients struggled in, we'll do a goal audit on goals that aren't working. And I'll say, did you break it down into, I teach 15 minute chunks because I think there's just like magic in 15 minutes. Like I can spend 15 minutes like scrolling TikTok or whatever and time is gone or I can spend 15 minutes unloading my dishwasher, right? And getting it done. Like I can convince myself to do something in 15 minutes. It doesn't seem like a long time, but it passes fast, right? Yeah. And so I'll say, hey, did you break this down into 15 minute chunks? Did you create a habit stack for yourself? Have you really made this doable? And they're like, no, I just wrote in my planner, like, read the book because I wanted to finish this book this month. And I'm like, no, back up. You've got to break it down. And I teach three different types of goals. And one of them is the numerical. And like, if you have this goal of reading a book every month, like you've got to do the math, right? A 300 page book is 10 pages a month, right? 300 divided by 30, 10 pages. I can do 10 pages. Right. Right. I can do that. And I think a lot of times we struggle to go after our goals because we're lacking in confidence because we've failed or feel like a failure, right? And I think these tiny micro wins, micro successes, steps towards your goal, that is massive to creating the confidence that we need to be able to be like, I can do this. Like right now I'm training for a half marathon. It's next month. And I used to run like before kids 10 years ago, like five miles just for fun or whatever. Right mm-hmm. now I'm like, oh no, okay, <laughs> this is not as easy as it was. And my goal has changed based on my season. My goal when I used to run, right? My half marathon was to get a personal record and like get a faster time. My goal this time is to finish. I don't care if I have to stop and walk seven times. I want to just finish. Yeah. And I think that is really important. And that's what I did to break the goal down. I said, okay, I know this is where I want to go. This is how many miles I'm going to run each day or each week. And I really broke it down small steps. And I've been training for like five months, Mm -hmm. right? Five months is a long time to train for one thing. But I told myself, I would rather move at a slower pace for me and give myself a bonus win than try to do it too fast and have my confidence shot down because it already was. It was super humbling yeah. starting to run again, right? I already was like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I could do this. This is really hard. Why is my show out of shape? All those things. But I would rather have broken it down, moved at a pace that made sense for me and continued to go than been like, great, I should be able to run three miles because I used to be able to run three miles and then quit by, quit yeah. by Tuesday right? I think there's power in that. There is absolutely. And I'm a marathoner myself. I've done 26 miles, half marathons, and I know the training is rigorous. So congratulations for embarking that and good luck next month. I know those um, long run 10 milers are no fun. (laughs) Yes. I have eight scheduled for Saturday and I'm like, and I'm slow. So when I say run, I'm going to be clear. This is like a run jog. Like we'll call it a rog. This is like not fast. Like I'm like a 12 minute miler. Like this is, I'm slow. Right. But I keep going. So I said to my husband, I was like, I'm going to be going to be gone for like two hours on Saturday. <laughs> like, this is going to take me a long time, but just doing it. I'm going to tell you the whole time I'm like cheering myself on every time I pass a different block. I'm like, I'm so proud of you. And I think we need, we need to talk to ourselves like that. I am like, even when I've stopped to walk old me 
would have berated myself and been like, you're such a loser. You used to be able to do this. What is the problem with you? You will never do anything. And something switched in me um, this time around. And I was like, I'm so proud of you. Look at you getting up and running today. Mm-hmm. You made it another block. Like you, and I, and I'm probably I'm talking out loud most of the time. Like I talk to myself all day, yeah. but we've got to, we've got to hype ourselves up and I'll get back from my runs and I will look in the mirror and I'll be like, I'm really proud of you today nice. and because nobody else is going to do it for us. Right. And when you're trying to work on those limiting beliefs, like you said, like one day you do just wake up and you're like, wait a minute. I think something's changed in my brain. Now it's not perfect every day, but something starts to change. And I think it's doing these tiny things every day to hype yourself up, to reward yourself for the successes and to build habits in a slow and steady way that stick that that is the biggest game changer and confidence builder. Yeah, absolutely. And then so the neural paths, right? You're creating new channel, new neural paths in your brain when you are repetitively empowering yourself, encouraging yourself, because they've been they were created by repetition because they were so negative for so many years. You think about to three decades of hearing the same thing. You suck, you mm-hmm. know, you're just like talking down on yourself. And then finally you start changing that dialogue and new, new pathways are, are created. And then that's when yeah. the voice disappeared because there's, there's no longer, those new ones are no longer connected. And it's powerful the way it's that, so cool. yeah, the things that we're yes. doing on a daily basis can actually change the, our brain all together. And, and we don't know, you know, we don't take advantage of that. I don't take advantage of that myself, but it's quite powerful. And that's what my habit rewiring program is all about. Like you really change your neural pathways easy and it's it's doable. So thank you for diving into that and, and sharing that because it stands true. So um, I would love to know about your morning routine. So how do you get up, dress up and show up? Yeah. So um, one of the things I did recently in the past months is switch my morning routine because I had it stuck in my head that I quote had to do my Bible reading before I did anything, right? I was like, this is what it has to look like for me. But when my run started to get longer and I like to run in the morning, I get super red. Like I could walk from here to the corner and my face is red. Like I need like one, I'm slow when I run and two, I need time to cool off. And I thought, how can I make this work without having to get up at like 4 a.m. to make it work? And so I gave myself permission to swap my routine around and Mm. it's been wonderful. So uh, most days, three days a week, I get up, I do my prayer before I leave the bed you know, just like me and God, just hanging out for a little bit, five minutes quick. And I run right away. Mm -hmm. And um, on my way back, then in my cool down period, what I do then is I pull out my Bible, I do my devotionals, I do all of that. And then I do some reading. Um, So we run a book club in my membership. So whatever we're reading, some sort of personal growth, I do some reading and a little bit of journaling. And at this point, my kids are up. So I'm getting them breakfast. We're getting off for the day. Their morning routine is runs um, very smoothly because we've created a really good rhythm for them. Mm-hmm. So I just tell them, go on your morning magnets because we have like a magnet chart and they just do their thing. It's wonderful. <laughs> um, it's, it's so nice because I used habit stacking with them. And Kids I it took have us, morning like, routines too. Yep. That's great. <laughs> yep. I use the stacking process and now they just know. And I don't have to, oh, it's so nice to not have to be like, go do this. Go. I just, I just like, go on your magnets. When you earn your magnets, you're done. Mm-hmm. Come see me. Mm-hmm. And, my, and my kids are little four and six and they're doing it. Right. So they do their thing while I do my thing. So then I shower. I always get dressed in the morning, even though I'm working from home and I typically wear jeans and a t-shirt. It just makes me feel a little bit better. And then I always unload my dishes because uh, I think it's really important to load your dishwasher before you go to bed, have that clean slate, and then you wake up and you're not behind. So if you unload your dishwasher in the morning all day, you just put stuff in the dishwasher and it doesn't stack up. And right. it's just a wonderful little hack. Um, and then we are out the door for the morning run, three schools, three kids, <laughs> to yeah. get everybody where they got to be. The morning routine does indeed start the night before. Whatever you have to do to prep yourself the next day. Like I like a clean kitchen as well, a clean home altogether. So that way I can get my mind ready for the day and not worry about cleaning up or tidying up or tedious things around the house. So oh, yeah. I am with you on that. I love the piece on having the kids with morning routines. Yeah. Um, I actually just came home from, from my sister, seeing my sister's kids. And I started a morning routine with them where we get up, we do gratitude, three things they're grateful for. And we kind of just like popcorn, say them out loud. And then I have them make their bed and then it's time to move their bodies. Yeah. And they loved it. <laughs> they, they, they're receptive to, to having that structure mm-hmm. in the morning. And you think to them, it's just they're going through the motion. But you and I know the benefits <laughs> of being yeah, grateful. Yeah, and kids need it. <laughs> they really need the routine and the structure. So that's kind of part of what we do is, and my kids are early birds. So when I get up to run at 530, my kids are probably getting up at the same time. And thankfully, like my husband's home. So we will alternate days where yeah. somebody goes out to run and because he's training for the same race and somebody works out in the <laughs> okay. house. So we alternate. So we're home 
So they're up the entire time. And we do a couple of things. So we do like some affirmations, like yeah. I am strong, I am smart, like that. And then they know they have to make their bed. One of the things that I also do that's been really helpful for me is I wanted to like push back though. Like, can I have my tablet in the morning? I want the TV, like all that nonsense. And I wanted them to play, but kids, they need some structure to learn to independently play first. So one of the things I do at night is I set up an independent play table. It's literally like our coffee table in like our entryway room. Like when they see it, when they go down the stairs and all I do is take one of their toys, like magnet tiles or something kinesthetic that can just open-ended toy, a domino is a puzzle and I just plop it on the table. I don't make them play with it, yeah. but just having it there it's the first thing they go to and then they play with it for a while before they're asking for TV or like whatever, because I know I still want to get my morning routine. And this right. is one of the things I recommend people do is write down the obstacles you're going to hit when it comes to your routine. Like, so for me, my morning routine, obstacle one, like my kids are going to need me while I'm in the middle of doing my Bible study mm -hmm. and then come up with some solutions to solve it before it even happens. Nice. So if my kids are going to be up, I know that I want something that's going to occupy them. So I already just toss something out every night. And then it seems fun and exciting because it's a toy move from one room to another. And then they do their thing. And then we've habit stacked, like, you know, getting dressed, brushing your teeth, cleaning up and doing a pickup before school. And then we have a little reward. Like whoever does their madness first gets to sit behind me in the car. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And then they do it. And, and it's been really nice. And anybody else can help just enforce that. Like my husband just be like, Hey, did you earn your magnets? And it's visual and they can see it. And I think our kids need that. We need that. We, it, I think routines give us such a safety of knowing like what's coming next. And in a world that feels super out of control, having even just a rhythm that you can flow. And I'm not all about like at eight 55, we do this. And at nine o'clock, we do this. Like, that's not how I work at all. I think having a rhythm and a routine just gives us so much freedom and um, just enjoyment in life because of the order. Yeah. There's a really um, good quote that says we first make our habits and then our habits make us. Ooh, love that. Yes. We're habitual yep, yep, yep. creature by mm -hmm. nature. So I love that the kiddos are getting involved in it. And because we, like, again, it really helps with help them being more calm throughout the day, being more um, problem solving rather yeah. than being um, needy or tantrum, throwing tantrums. They kind of, um, it's it, it byproduct is they learn to actually self it's not to medicate, but soothe, you know, have that calmness, be able to solve problems on their own. Yeah. And, it, and I think it gives them skills that they're going to need. Like I never yep. had to make my bed as a kid. So as a grown up, it is really hard for me to remember to make my bed every day. So if that's one of the things I want them to do in the future, we're going to start that now. And I think having these routines just continue to show up for them. It gives them so much power of knowing, Hey, I can do this. Like we have a couple of things we do in our Sunday routines. And one of them is we pick out clothes for the week for my daughter. Mm -hmm. She's a fashionista, she says, and she's got to pick out all her clothes and whatever. Right. And this Sunday we didn't do it because our day just got away from us. But because I posted the routines, we know our schedule, what we have to do. I remember I went and she said, Hey, can I stay up a little bit later? And I said, sure. So I let her stay up. And I said, I'm going to go on a call. As soon as I'm done, it was like eight 30 on Sunday. You got to go to bed. Well, I came out, she had fallen asleep on the couch. But well, what she had done was she had gone up to her room. She had picked up all of her clothes, underwear, shirts, socks, piled them up and put them on, on the table. And of course, I snapped like the cutest little picture because I was this adorable. And I said to her the next morning, I said, oh, you know, I didn't say you had to do this. And she's like, I know, but we were supposed to do it today. And we didn't get to pick out our clothes for the week. So I figured I would just do it. And my daughter's going to be six. And I was like, yes, this is amazing. And it was just giving her that power and independence, I think is such a, such a great skill. And it, it you know, reinforced to me that the stuff we've been doing is really working. And, and now I'll catch her like planning multiple outfits and laying them out and hanging them up for weeks on end. She's got all her outfits picked out and it is awesome. It's a habit for her now to do it. Yep. And, and it's, yeah. it's just going to be voluntary, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's awesome. That's a great story. I really love that. Thank you for sharing it. Now we are talking about how the importance of just habits, not just for uh, moms, but now how the kids are getting be are being benefited mm -hmm. from it. So I'm really, really um, enthusiastic to hear your point of view on it, Kara. Tell us, how can we connect with you? How can we find you? Yeah, sure. Uh, Instagram is my preferred platform. I'm over at a purpose driven mom and you're obviously podcast people because you're listening. So uh, I have a podcast over at the purpose driven mom show. You can check that out. And if you need more help with routines, I've got a workshop at a purpose driven mom.com slash goals. Uh, and I would love to hear if you have any questions, feel free to send me a little voice memo on uh, Instagram and we can chat. 
Excellent. Morning enthusiasts, you've heard it here first. This has been Kara Harvey. And my goodness, the thing she brought on today was really hitting home because we're, we're now getting our kids involved, moms who are, who are busy. The benefit of having the kids partake in a morning ritual and a morning routine can benefit them and help them be independent, but actually free you up because they're going to want to do their task on their own because yes. it becomes habitual. So it was very, very nice to talk to Kara today about um, busy moms and building habits and her work that she's doing um, with the thousands and thousands of women that she works with currently. It's been a pleasure and such a joy having you on, on here, Kara. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you for having me. This was fun. Excellent. So Morning Enthusiasts, don't forget to get your um, Head Savers app, track your habits, um, stack your habits. All that we talked about today, Kara covered um, very thoroughly. And so it's a pleasure. And thank you. Thank you again for listening. Kara, thanks for your time. Thank you. All right, morning enthusiasts. That's it for today's show. Thank you for tuning in. If you love the best morning routine ever podcast, we'd love to hear from you. So go ahead and subscribe, rate, and give a review on iTunes or Google Play. While you're at it, tell a friend about the show. Be sure to visit bestmorningroutineever.com and our Facebook group to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic free bonus content. Until next time.